with the female to the safety of the bus and comforted the woman uh, until the arrival of the police. The police later attended and escorted the woman to the hospital. And as I've been saying, the last, I guess, three presentations, again, this is just an amazing uh, example of what happens when you have 13,000 people out across the city on the bus and streetcars and subways. And it's another excellent example of uh, quick thinking uh, and courage on behalf of CDC employees uh, in their actions day to day. And, I, and I'm so pleased again, Matthew, to just uh, congratulate you on quick thinking and courage and on behalf of the entire commission, thank you so much for your actions. And uh, again, I, I think this is another example where your quick thinking, as with the other TTC employees, actually did well. Congratulations.
Um, so we know too that we need help in that regard and that's why uh, the, the chair has previously announced that uh, a panel will be put in place. So just following up on who was chosen as the chair, it's Steve uh, O'Brien, general manager of 1K West Hotel and Residence, who brings a wealth of experience uh, to the job. Uh, Toronto born and raised, Steve brings to the Blue Ribbon panel approximately 30 years in Toronto's hotel industry, working with hotel companies such as Marriott Hotel and Resorts, Hilton International, Delta Hotel and Resorts, and, and Ramada Canada. Steve has been an integral part of the opening team for Toronto hotels and has had the privilege of serving on several high-level hotel brand and customer service councils. Since opening the doors in its current place at, uh, in the summer of 2005, Steve has been the general manager of the 575-suite One King West Hotel and Residence located at King and Young in downtown Toronto which currently employs about 250 people. Uh, we at the TTC will of course uh, support Steve in uh, doing his work uh, in, and that would include of course uh, filling up the panel uh, over the next uh, short while, firming up uh, with uh, greater precision the terms of reference, consulting with the public and of course there will be a very important public consultation piece to make sure that Toronto, Torontonians can bring their good ideas. Uh, to, the, to the table and to, at the end of the day, getting a report to the Commission, hopefully, if all goes well, uh, by the end of June that uh, we can vote on as a Commission. And then, of course, support also to the Chief General Manager and staff to implement the report in the months and years to come. Uh, so that's, that's, the, uh, that's the person, that's the plan, uh, and maybe now, before we, I think we have uh, number 13 uh, to vote on, invite this Steve to uh, say a few words. Come on. Welcome, welcome to Steve. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Um, <coughs> basically, so most of what I was going to talk about, what the mandate of the, uh, of the new advisory council is, but um, I think first and foremost, I would really like to uh, thank you all for the opportunity. It's an honor. Several weeks ago, I was asked if I would consider being part of the panel and lend um, my support and some of my experience and insights into the panel, and I, uh, I'm very happy about that. So yes, I'd be very much uh, glad to help. And then uh, recently, we were asked to uh, chair this council, and I have to say, I'm extremely honored, um, flattered. Um, Crazy. Uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm looking very much forward to being part of this. I think that there's a lot that we can do, and, and I'm just one part of this puzzle. I mean, we got to put a good, good council together. There's a, a lot of good people out there who care about the city. Um, uh, Joe mentioned that I was born and raised in Toronto and spent most of my younger life uh, using the TTC to get to and from school. and. Uh, I, I currently still, although I take the GO Transit to work because I live outside of the city, but I still utilize the uh, transit services and utilize the TTC to get around Toronto. So I understand how important and vital the TTC is to the city. And, and it's, uh, it encompasses every, really every aspect of Toronto. It's, it's important to tourism. It's important, it, it provides a, a means of transportation to the many, many people. I mean, at the hotel, we've got 200 plus employees, and the majority of them take the TTC to work. And it's extremely important because the experience, as we mentioned, it doesn't matter what industry you're in, um, what sector, whether it's the transit, whether it's hospitality, whether it's retail, um, we're all customers, and we all expect a certain customer experience, customer service experience. And, you know, it's not so much about when things go right. Because, honestly, we don't expect things to go wrong. When you stay at a hotel, you expect to be greeted well, with a smile, check in, go to your room, everything's nice and clean, people smile at you, and then you leave without incident. It's when the incident happens, when that negative experience happens, it's what you do about it then, and how you handle it then, that will turn what could, pe could potentially be a real bad negative experience into a real positive one. And 
you know, like I said, it doesn't matter where you are. We're all customers. We all have expectations. And uh, with the rest of the panel, we're going to work very hard to help and, and provide recommendations and, and talk to customers and talk to staff and do everything we can to provide recommendations that will help the TTC um, get to where we want to be and where you need to be. And we'll, uh, hopefully we'll be very successful. And at the end of June, we'll have our recommendations together and we can move forward. So thank you all very much. So I'm uh, glad to be part of it, glad to help. You look at the TTC doing what you do, what's the first thing you see wrong? You know what, honestly, I think it's probably too soon to answer that question. Um, you know, we, we just started this, I need to put the panel together, I need to talk to a lot of people, and put up, you know, roll up the sleeves and get in there and, uh, and ask me that question about a couple of months. Are you getting paid? No. Do you write? Yeah, I do. Um, like I said, inside, I, uh, I live outside the city, use the uh, GO Transit coming in, and then whenever I need to get about uh, Toronto, I use the transit. Have you had any negative experiences on the TTC? Me personally? Um, I, I've not actually, honestly, no. Uh, my experience with it, I've, uh, most of what I do right now is, is, is short hauls and, and short trips using the subway, uh, a little bit of the streetcar, and, and no, I honestly haven't. What do you know Um, again, I think that I think that a lot has been said and, and, and certainly uh, uh, written about the recent recent developments. But you know, my job and, and the job of the rest of the panel isn't really to delve so much about the past but move forward. And I'm really not in a position to comment on that specifically. But we will um, we'll use it and use what has happened and, and take that and, and try and uh, you know develop recommendations that certainly can address it and, and hope to. Uh, you know, instill a culture that that those won't happen so much. There's no money being set aside for this uh, project. Do you think it's necessary to spend a little money on, uh, on such a project? Well, I think that uh, I know that there's no money set aside for this specific endeavor. Um, but the 2010 budget is improved, uh, has been approved, and you know, our, our certain mandate and our goal is not spend a lot of money on this project, but. You know, if there's money that needs to be spent, I've, I've certainly been assured that, that uh, they will take that into consideration and do what needs to be done, and we'll make the recommendations, and then we'll take it from there. In your industry, have you ever had to deal with this kind of a remedial customer service issue? Remedial? Yeah. I mean, you know, customer service is, customer service is, is funny because it's, it's really a simple thing, um, but it's a tough thing because I don't care no matter how good you are, you're not going to make everybody happy. It's impossible to make everybody happy. So what you have to do is you have to instill a culture within your organization where um, you know, people take pride in what they're doing. Mistakes are going to be made. Um, people need to feel empowered to make decisions to deal with whatever issue they have and move on from it and, and learn from it. So, How much is it going to be to turn around with um, I think it's going to be challenging, but like everything else, I mean, you know, we were just in the room where where four TTC employees were were awarded for saving people's lives, and that's pretty impressive as well. So um, I think we'll do what we can. We'll make the recommendations that we can, and, and we'll see what comes out of it. What are the okay. parallels between what are the parallels between the hospitality industry and the transit? Like, what, what can you bring? Well, I, I think it's 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 really similar. I mean. Um, Obviously, the industries are different, but we're all in the people business. And it, at the end of the day, no matter what we do, um, it's about the guest service. It's about the guest experience. It's about making that experience a positive one. And like I said earlier, you're not going to make everybody happy, but you got to do your best to make everybody happy. And when you don't, that's your opportunity. It's not a challenge. It's an opportunity to certainly turn some things around and let people know that you understand empathize, you sympathize, and, and, uh, and you do your best to make it better. Just off the top of your head, though, what do you think would make people happy about the TTC? You know, again, I think there's, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of things out there, but give me, give me some time. Joe, who else would you like to see on the panel? Um, well, at the, at, at the end of the day, we're going to work with uh, Steve around choosing who the panelists are. 
and uh, certainly my contribution to that discussion will be that we need to take a multi-stakeholder approach so people with expertise in customer service who are in the business on a day-to-day -day level like Steve, but also some of our passengers. How we choose them, I don't know, but um, we need some passengers who will just give the day-to-day -day experience of the TTC um, from a passenger perspective. I think as well, either as part of the panel or part of the public consultation, we need to make sure that our, our union uh, and employees, frontline employees, are part of the process as well, because at the end of the day, uh, any service, quality of service improvement at the TTC is des desperately requires their participation and we think they have some good ideas as well to offer. Well, how concerned are you about the TTC public image? Well, I am concerned about the image. That's why we're set it, that's why we've chosen to set up this panel and get people like uh, Steve uh, involved. Um, I do think that for every story of a sleeping collector, there is a story of a hero who has saved someone's life who has gone above and beyond and made passengers feel great and feel that they've had a good quality experience on the TTC. So I think it's an issue of, of moving the standard higher. I think if you look at every endeavor uh, that we've been part of in the past 20 years as human beings, be it as a driver of a car, be it as a customer, the demands on customer service are higher. And we at the TTC also have to be part of that culture of raising the, the level of customer service higher and higher. So it's an ongoing, ever ever uh, higher target that we need to achieve. In, in terms of challenges that you've been faced, have you ever come into the situation dealing with you and I's employees? And how do you think all those might, they might constrain your ability to make real changes? Um, the answer to that, I, I, to be honest, is two-part. Have I, have I come into something like this from a unionized standpoint? No. Um, but. The, our hotel is unionized, and, and uh, I've, I've worked very closely with, with uh, the hotel union um, that we work with. And um, from everything that I understand, um, this isn't just a management initiative. It's, uh, it's this initiative is combined with the union. Um, both management and the union understand that this is something that needs to be addressed. Um, that customer service can be improved, and and most likely should be improved. Um, so I don't anticipate your problem there. You've, you've got about 250 employees. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. sort of impress customer service on you. You're not going to have a... Yeah. yeah. Is that, like, what is that? Well... Do you think you can get the message through to that many people? That's going to be the challenge. I mean, that at the end of the day, um, you know, we can we can analyze, we can assess, and we can make our recommendations. And hopefully, those recommendations that we make, and the and the processes that we the process improvements that we recommend, um, people will buy in, and everybody will understand. And at the end of the day, we'll make the recommendations, and, and it's what the uh, the TTC uh, you know takes it from there. So you're saying that getting paid? Why do that's a good question. Um, I think that the TTC is important, and it's you know when I was asked, I was asked to help, and I was glad to help. Um, taking on the chair role um, was an honor, but it, it's something that that I think it makes a difference. And, and at the end of the day, uh, as a hotelier, the TTC is very important. It's very important to all of us from a tourism perspective. It's very important from an employer perspective. Staff come to work, if they have a good experience on the way to work, they'll all be happier at work and they'll hopefully do you know, a better job or certain, certainly enjoy their job a little bit better. So I'm a Toronto guy, I <coughs> care, glad to help, I'll do my best. See what happens. Do customer service solutions cost money? They can, um, but at the end of the day, a lot of it is, is, is culture and, and attitude. So, I mean, you can spend a lot of a lot of money trying to implement programs and, and initiatives, but at the end of the day, if, if, if the staff don't buy in, um, then it, it could be, you know, good money gone bad. Um, the other thing too, though, it, it's it's, you know, and I'm I'm speaking a little little soon, but it's not just all about, you know, the staff. It's about it's about the customers. It's about awareness. It's about, you know, working <coughs> together. And it's about understanding and appreciating everybody. And, and uh, we'll see what happens. Do you think it might be a good idea in the long run to have someone like you know, a regular guy on the commission? Uh, sorry, uh, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> it's good, I guess. So where do you live? Where do I live? I live in Milton. And so how long does it take you to get to Toronto every day? On the GO train, it's about 50 minutes. So Driving, what's depending. What's your plan to get to know the TTC better from a casual rider to someone who's making big recommendations? 
you know what, and again, it's just not me, so I'm, I'm part of a team. So when we put this team together, um, you know, honestly, it sounds like a cliche, but roll up the sleeves. Um, we've, we've been promised a lot of support from the TTC to help us. We're going to look into their hiring initiatives, their training initiatives. We're going to do public forums. We'll talk to staff. We'll talk to riders. And we'll kind of try and put together a TTC 101 and learn as much as we can about the operation. How often do I use it? Um, I use it a couple times. And how did you get in touch with, with um, the commission? I called them. And where do you know each other from? Uh, we don't. Uh, okay. He was on a short list, and, um, okay. and uh, I called him and invited him to be the chair. And is there a chance that someone from another tribe? Relations between our members and the traveling public, but I can tell you we're not off to a good start. And I believe I just heard Mr. O'Brien say that he has no familiarity with the transit system, does not utilize the transit system. Um, that's that's concerning. Um, you know. The fact that he doesn't re reside in the city, I think, is, is maybe an issue to some Torontonians. I think it's important that you have a clear understanding of the transit in Toronto, understand some of the issues that we're facing, the lack of funding, the overcrowding. I think you have to experience that in order to know how to address it. And it's clear, very clear by Mr. O'Brien's comments, that he is completely unaware of the issues that um, transit workers face. and, and quite frankly, the public face. And, um, you know, the fact that the TTC um, or the commissioners or nor the commissioners had consulted with us um, about Mr. O'Brien is, is concerning. I think we're off to a bad start. Um, you know, obviously, had we been involved in the selection process of the chair of this proposed committee, um, we would have ensured that it was a Torontonian who utilizes the TTC, who has experience with the TTC, who recognizes the issues that the customers face and some of the challenges that our members face. Um, the fact is he works in the hotel industry. I'm sure he does a wonderful job in the hotel industry. But I'd like to ask him when the last time one of his clerks was punched in the face. I mean, that is an issue that we have to deal with each and every day. There is an average of one and a half to two assaults every day. I think it's disappointing that Mr. O'Brien is not aware of some of these issues. Um, but again, I want to reiterate that the union has acknowledged that there are some shortcomings on our site. There are issues that we have to address, and we are willing to do that. Um, but, you know, if the TTC is, is, is going to try to run gunshot over us and exclude the employees, exclude uh, the union from participating in the election process, as they've already done, um, we're not off to a good start. But they did say they're going to include you on the panel. Well, that could ever mean to be seen. Um, I can tell you we've had no formal uh, request to be part of the panel. Um, obviously, we would believe that employees should be part of that panel as well. Um, so to this point, we've received no formal uh, invitation to participate in this panel. I think that um, we, as the representatives of the employees, should have been involved in the selection process. Um, I can tell you very clearly, we would have raised the concerns uh, about the uh, lack of experience that Mr. O'Brien has with the transit system. Well, are you guys not so involved? Part of the report today is about an initiative of your uh, collector's group, some ideas that they've had. Well, aren't, aren't you guys involved? No, we have been totally excluded from no, the report. We have had no involvement in the report. Mr. Webster did provide the report for me late yesterday afternoon, um, but that's the first we've heard of it. That's the first that uh, we've seen of it. Um, so to this point, the TTC has excluded us from participating in in the selection of the panel and, and setting up the parameters of the panel. Um, we're still, you know, we are still going to work with whoever is willing to work with us to improve relations with the traveling public. Do you think there's a point about that before that talks about how there's a culture at the TTC of not meeting expectations? Well, I, I think in order to address the culture, you must be familiar with the culture. I mean, Mr. O'Brien has acknowledged that he has no understanding of the transit system, has not utilized it. And in order to resolve a problem, you first must be able to identify the problem. And I, I think we're lacking.
affordable food as well as where you want to do it. The whole future is based on how well you serve your customers. Here at Salas and the TC, thanks to this, it's an exceeding level of meeting customers. The boat train doesn't have the same issues uh, that we have here in Toronto. And I think it's very important for the customers, the traveling public out there, that they have someone heading this committee or the chair of the committee that understands some of the frustrations that they're facing, has actually experienced trying to jump on a train at 8 o'clock in the morning and, and being crushed against people. I think that that experience is paramount in order to, to address the issue. I'm a firm believer that in order to rectify an issue, you have to first be able to identify it. And I think Mr. O'Brien's going to have some challenges in, in doing that. Well, it's nice to hear that he may hop on the subway today and get that experience, but, you know, it's, it's, it's concerning. Will your members be fully cooperative with the panel and uh, offer any suggestions and uh, input that they we are, we are going to do everything we can. We will work with the TTC. We are committed to that. We have committed, made that commitment to the traveling public, and we are committed to following through on that. You know, it is disappointing that the TTC has not involved us in the selection process of the panel. We're not even sure if we're going to be part of the panel. Although it has been conveyed verbally that there may be one position available for the union. I'm not sure if that's a representative or an operator. But I think it's very important that you focus in on the relationship out there between the employees and the traveling public. And the traveling public, quite frankly, deserves better. They deserve someone that's going to head this panel that has experienced the challenges and the frustration that the public is facing. Yeah. It seems like we need to be a culture change, and there still seems to be a bit of a combative move between management yeah, and yeah. the union. After a while, it's got a long time. But I mean, just even you're saying that you're not going to leave on things, I mean, how can you work on customer service if you're not going to talk to each other? Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's concerning. We're open. We want to have these discussions. We, unfortunately, we made some assumptions that we would be involved in the selection process. We're just finding out now that uh, they selected uh, Mr. O'Brien, and I think it would have been paramount to have us involved. Um, I think that we would have raised some concerns with the appointment of Mr. O'Brien that may have changed their mind or, or sent them in a different direction. You know, I can tell you that I don't think the traveling public is going to be very happy to know that someone that's chairing up this committee has never experienced the frustration that they're experiencing. On the other hand, our members have a better understanding of the frustrations that they feel. Um, so I think the traveling public is, is going to be disappointed um, at the initiative of the commission and the TTC. They get out on the bus, on the Young Street 9 bus, at 3 o'clock in the morning. That's the kind of work ethic that Adam brings forward. Um, you know, but obviously Adam's got some decisions to make and uh, I'm going to allow him to make them. But as far as is contributing to the TTC, um, I think he, he's done well um, in, his, in his past uh, um, workings with the TTC. Would you think the media circus is just sort of your weekend that Adam could run the TTC? Well, I, I think we all have distractions as, as human beings. I mean, uh, you know, every you hop on a, a plane, you don't know if the pilot had a fight with the wife the night before, or maybe he caught the wife fooling around the night before. So I'm sure he's going to be somewhat distracted. I mean, we all face those challenges each and every day. And, um, you know, Adam's obviously going through one of those challenges, um, unlike, you know, unlike most. But, um, you know, and he's going to have to see himself through it. He's going to have to make some decisions. But more importantly, I'm commenting on what he brings to the table at the TTC, and I can tell you that he brings an eth a work ethic uh, uncontested in there. Um, okay, the thanks. The cost of this program would be less than one half of one cent on each fair paid. Next year it will be less. Why don't we go down to Queen Street and ask TTC riders whether or not they would be prepared to pay half a cent? on their fare to ensure that veterans um, would be able to utilize transit free of cost. Our union did a public poll of Toronto residents just last December and found 80% in favor of free transit passes for these veterans. Only 11% of Torontonians were opposed, the rest were unsure. We are confident that another poll would have essentially the same results. When asked directly, People respect our war veterans and believe they should be given some special consideration for their service. So I'm asking the commissioners today to do the same. I'm sure all of you respect our, our war veterans. Well, quite frankly, I know we do. 
I mean, I would be surprised to hear any politician, elected politician, uh, who owes his or her job uh, to the fact that we live in a democratic society. So who would begrudge this last little bit of thanks for their fellow citizens who defended democracy? I'm disappointed that we would even be asking, can we afford this? It's not like we've been showering these veterans with all kinds of free stuff since they returned from war well over a half century ago. I don't think we've exactly spoiled them, have we? Um, when was the last time you heard a veteran talking about the wonderful uh, things that he receives and, and how fortunate he is um, you know, to return home as a survivor? Um, you know, a seat on a bus in their advanced old age is, is all we're talking about here. The money they would save would be barely enough for a small coffee and a donut at Tim Hortons. So I leave it with you, Commissioners. I hope your conscience will be your guide. Please do the right thing. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I'll note that the Commission approved uh, this principal last uh, commission meeting uh, for the Belief Defense Affairs uh, for funding uh, sources. Would it be uh, inappropriate for me to request some written correspondence on, on the issue whether it's from the commissioners? Or yeah, I think uh, we'll request the general secretary to follow, to follow up with the action taken by the commissioner. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Uh, the board of directors will operate the station. I would carry it one step further. I would give them, allow them to do revenue, op uh, revenue opportunities uh, uh, so that they can raise money to put towards their station. Uh, and in fact, I, I think the board of directors would be able then to decide what the priorities are for that station. And if cleanliness is a priority, they buy cleaning services from the center. Uh, if if, uh, state, if fair evasion is a priority, then they can look after it because they're there at the station. I would venture to guess that the senior staff don't know what's happening at the Lake Karen Station, for example. Uh, they don't know because they have to rely on what somebody tells them, unless they rely on what somebody else tells them. But the station master system, you know, each says, each, each station uh, operating within type guidelines, uh, but at the same time responding to the community. People will take pride in their stations again. Uh, they'll take pride in the TTC again. And so I'm asking for you that this is a pilot project. I suggested uh, I, I suggest one station because we're in fact revitalizing uh, our sites at the moment. Uh, in fact, the PDC has put some money into looking at the revitalization of the community. And I'd like to take that on as a pilot project. I would also like any commissioner on this commission to join me on that board and sit there and, and understand what the system looks like from the bottom of the passenger. So I, I think it's a question of, of the DTC having to change over the, uh, the next while, and we're going to need models to manage that change. I think this is one model that deserves to be tried. It's not the only model. I know that Councillor Milton had some suggestions uh, for, a, for a model that I think would work as well. But I think we have to try these ideas, uh, and if they work, try them. If, if adopt them, generally, if they don't work, don't buy into them. Now, I'm asking you one thing, though. Please do not refer this to staff. Uh, for comments at this point. I referred it to staff four years ago. And that's why I distributed that article that you have. Uh, it died. I don't want this to die. If it's going to die, put a stake through its heart now and say we're not interested. I'm, 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 I'm asking you to try one pilot project and possibly two others uh, and let it happen and then staff will determine to work on this uh, with you and myself. Uh, to develop the best model for doing this. This is going to cause them to have to rethink this, the entire system, you understand. Uh, because nobody can tell you now how much it costs to operate a Glen Cairn subway station or the Yorkville subway station. Uh, and people are going to have to start rethinking what we do. It's going to affect, uh, it, it'll affect a new relationship with our unions. So we'll have to sit down and talk about how staff gets used. We're going to have to talk about how the workforce gets deployed. Uh, Councillor Paul will appreciate this, Councillor Sonica. Um, the way the CPC operates now, okay, I'll, I'll just drop it up with you, is like operating the school without a principal and a vice principal and having the caretaker deployed by central office. And, and, and you know the importance of the collegiality of the school. And I think this will make our stations work for the benefit of the public. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor. Um, over here.
Chair, Commissioner Alex Um, Mr. Chair, is it would it be possible to I'd like to, to help out and to investigate the feasibility of this very creative venture and uh, was intrigued as I was reading it. Um, but perhaps going the, the the route of all three stations is too much uh, to absorb and to um, administer. Perhaps we could do it for just one. Uh, we have some, there's no one, sorry, let me just, are there any questions of the speaker? Yeah. So, okay, Commissioner Moser had a first question. Thank you for that, Howard. Very intriguing. Uh, the initial budget, uh, we have to look at things globally and we have to look at things locally. So how would you establish the first budget for your, for your group? Uh, is it based on the square footage of it, the, the size of the station? Uh, I'm just trying to picture how this... I, I think that would, that would not, I'm not going to follow the senior staff, I think Gary and the staff would sit down and say, so how much does it cost at present to operate the station, give them all the services it gets, and they'll determine um, what the, uh, the global budget will be for this, this group. They'll also have to determine some tight guidelines on which the, the board operates. Yeah, you want to start this with a very tight set of guidelines, and as, as you see what works, you start to relax. I think budget will, will be determined by staff, and that's a good thing because it will cause them to think of how much it costs to actually operate the subway station. So I'm trying to picture this right across the system. I mean, I, I, I like the idea of, of local input and so forth, and, and we have to look at global budgets, as you know, and we have to look at local budgets and maintenance, maintenance issues. So how do we define this? Devil's in the details in this one. So how do we how do we get to the details? Uh, I'm confident that our staff can work out the details. And you might start off by saying, well, this is your budget. You want to spend this much you money? You buy it from Central Cleaning Service. It may devolve into the point where you want somebody full time to the station, but you have to do the much you have. I'm just just going through the uh, rinks rinks uh, issue as far as uh, hockey hockey and allocation and so forth. So. To yeah. me, that's the reason I want to, the devil's in the detail in this one, is you know, right. how we how we operate generally, how this fits into the overall, so we, we don't miss any elements that, that may put in by And I'm saying give us the opportunity through a pilot project to work up those details so we're ready uh, when we have to consider this or something like this for the whole system. Yeah, that's cool. Okay. Questions? Uh, so any other question uh, for the deputy? Commissioner Peruta. I guess, I guess my, my question to, uh, uh, to Councilor Mosco uh, would be around, while, um, while it seems like a very novel uh, um, uh, project, the part that, of this that, that uh, is interesting and, and exciting to me is the idea of having somebody in charge of the station, the notion of a station master. Somebody who, who who has responsibility for it, sort of the the day to day going on, the cleanliness, the operations. If if somebody is, is you know uh, God forbid, lamps you know falls asleep behind the uh, uh, you know uh, uh, collector's booth, you know there's somebody there. For your, for your question, if, if there's if for example um, the the um, and I guess what I wanted to know from you, could one be achieved without the other? Could the notion of a station master uh, uh, be achieved without uh, without having a board and, and, and all those things. Osaka, Tokyo, Atlanta have station masters. And there are a number of systems around the world that have station masters. And, and from your perspective, how do they have? Is that a, is, oh, I've, I've been to Atlanta, I've looked at the station masters and I've talked to them. They don't have a board, but they do have a station master and the station that's going to be operating. And would you be satisfied with just something like that? that no, I'm very much. No, no. I, I think that uh, I'd like to try pilot uh, one station at least uh, to see how the idea works. Uh, are there any other questions for the, for the speaker? Being done, I can speak to Mr. Paul. I'm prepared to put forward a motion that we uh, look at having a, a proven pilot. 
Um, I think uh, this is something that has happened around the world in different areas, and it certainly, uh, as long as it doesn't cost for the additional dollars, which I will utilize the motion as number four that comes to Moscow as put forward here, uh, in order to ensure that. So, um, without further ado, I'll just put that uh, a station pilot be approved. I'm not going to actually state, I think that needs to have, may have, need to have some discussion, I don't know. Two, that the pilot project operate within the current TTC budget and staff report back to the Commission on the budget amounts, both operating and capital that will be segregated for the operation of the pilot station. Um, and that three, that staff report back on any issues regarding implementation. And uh, this way I see it can get underway. I, I have great belief that they will work with Council Monster on this, and as was mentioned with uh, Book 113, and I think we should just see how this works. It is not something that would be unique to, um, to Canada, because it is in effect in different forms around the world. Are there any other speakers for that? Okay, so we have. Well, I, I have a question. So you have a question. You have a question of the uh, of motion. Can you use your microphone, please? Ideally, I think it would be for staff, but the mover can answer that question. So how would we choose uh, the station that would be piloted if, if the comes to motion? Uh, I would need that um, discussion with staff. Councillor Bosco has come forward with a request on the station, uh, station democratization. He has suggested that what he has suggested in his uh, memo that there be three stations identified. Um, there have been concerns, I think, expressed, and that, you know, I'm just, I'm just you know, generalized. You know what, Mr. Chairman? I'm not supportive. Wait, wait, I just, I think. I think the committee needs to be very clear. There had been some grumblings about whether we had the resources. The CGM, quite frankly, expressed some concern around staff resources around this, and, and fair enough. The issue here, really, I think that you want to consider is whether you want to do one station, and Councillor Moscow, I think, has advocated very strongly for York, uh, Yorkdale station. Or, and I you know I'll joke inside, there were some issues about whether you have other stations. As, as I, the only thing I guess I'm speaking to this is that I'd ask you to consider one of the things that, that intrigued me about Councillor Moscow's motion was his willingness to take the lead on this. These sort of projects, we all know as councillors, uh, take a lot of work to work with the community on a particular project and community engagement. I think if there were other uh, commissioners or people who really wanted to take a, you know, take a, a, a project like this underway and see how it worked, I think we might want to consider it. In this case, I think, uh, you know, councillors come forward and put down the York out. Other people would like stations. I suggest that maybe we'll bring this back to the next commission. People should talk to the CGM, perhaps the chair, and we're happy. There is a, a request by Commissioner Hall for staff to report back on other issues, approve this, but there are going to be issues to report on. And maybe as, as part of that, uh, due to a desire from other people to participate in the program, that this program recommends expansion of it. I just think we should be a little bit clear on that, on how you want to, it's up to you how you want to handle it, but, uh, you know, if, if this is really a desire to go forward on multiple stations, uh, I guess we'll figure out how to do that. My motion is strictly for one. I understand, but, you know, I mean, I just, it needs to be on. Yeah, okay, are there any other uh, speakers? Seeing none, then, on the motion by Commissioner Hall, all those in favor, opposed, motion carried. Councillor, thank you very much. Okay, uh, we are now going to